Thank you, Father. We're just going to have a short time, and I've just been praying and asking the Father what he wants to do. And there were so many things that Andrew was saying that was just uh, triggering some things in the Spirit. We've got to learn how to live in the Spirit. Living life in the Spirit is the key that will bring supernatural transformation to your life. Why are we afraid of that? Many are afraid of living life in the Spirit. And do you know why we're afraid? Because you have to let go of something to learn something new. And when the Spirit speaks to you, He's going to come against everything you know, everything you think, and He's going to say, you're going to walk in my ways or not? He told the disciples, He told them that He was going to pay the price, He was going to die, on the third day He would be raised up. He told them to stay the course. He explained everything to them so everything would be nice and easy. And what happened? They went into doubt and unbelief. We see the story of Gideon. And what was the, the, the whole response? If you have fear, go home. Oh, hallelujah. Yeah. I was just thinking about my wife's cooking there as I was standing there with Gideon. I get to go home and have some cooking. And then they go home. Hey, yeah, Gideon said we could come home. He's only kept 300. Come home? What do you mean come home? Well, they're going to battle. Well, you're not getting any food. You can go live on the roof till he comes back. <laughs> Maybe that's what happened. Maybe that's what happened. We've got to wake up in the Spirit. We've got to have eyes to see and ears to hear. What we don't need in our, in our uh, walk with the Spirit is we don't need cloning going on. We've seen so much of that in Christianity, just cloning uh, after another. But what we have to discover is who are you? I remember one uh, minister sharing many years ago, he, he said, you know, this is who I am in Scripture, and he started to share the Scriptures, and I was sitting there like, wow, that's amazing. Then I spent 10 years trying to find that one Scripture. Where's my Scripture? I just need my Word. And then everything would be okay. But it's not always like that, is it? It's not always like that. So what the Father wants for us is to know how to live life in the Spirit. He wants us to be spiritually alert. Prepare your minds for action, it says Amen. in the book of Peter. I'm going to turn there and just uh, read that a second. Hold on. It's first, uh, first Peter chapter 1, verse 13. It says, Therefore, prepare your minds for action. Be self-controlled. Set your hope fully on the grace to be given you when Yeshua the Messiah is revealed. As obedient children, don't conform to the evil desires you had when you lived in ignorance. But just as he who called you is holy, so be holy in all you do. For it is written, Be holy because I am holy. I want us to allow those scriptures to absorb into our lives. Prepare your minds for action. You know, it's not all just about, well, I just trust in you, Yeshua. Just, uh, you know, just do your work. Do your thing. No, he says preparation. You must be alert. We must be students of the scripture. We must be pressing in to truly understand what the Father is saying. And what's one of the keys in understanding scripture? The keys in understanding scripture is when we go to scripture, we take this journey with the Ruach HaKodesh. We listen, we read the scripture, we say, Father, what are you saying to me in this scripture? How do I understand this scripture? I want to share with you a little bit about testimony uh, just now. You know, as many of you heard, I got uh, radically transformed on the island of Patmos, <laughs> an island of Arran in uh, Scotland where I couldn't escape, and I was radically transformed radically transformed. When I came back from that experience, like I said last night, I was so filled with the power of the Spirit that I preached the gospel everywhere I went. Why? Because I was redeemed. I was transformed. When you have a life-changing experience, you can't keep your mouth shut. But culture says, don't share it. You know, it's just keep it to yourself. It's your own personal salvation. It's all about you. I would get into the closet because that's what it says in the scripture. Get in the closet and seek his face and pray. And I went into the closet and I got my, my Bible and I got uh, my torch and I sat there at the bottom of the wardrobe because in Scotland you just have little houses. Sitting in the bottom of the wardrobe with my flashlight. Sorry, we're in America, not a torch. Burn the house down or something, you know. So I'm there with my flashlight and I said, Father, I'm not leaving until I hear from you, even if it means I spend the rest of my life stuck in this closet. 
I was serious because if I have religion, I've, you know, what's the point? I need to walk and know what it is to be in relationship. And he started to speak to me very clearly. And it's amazing how many people want to come against you, especially when you're young, and say, you know, you, know, you don't hear from God. How dare you say God told you? God told you. Well, who do you think you are? The Pope or something? The Pope? <laughs> Where did I come from? Yeah, backtrack, <laughs> rewind, pause, cut. <laughs> the Pope? Really? Okay. But we lose confidence in declaring what Yeshua and the Spirit is saying to us because people are not used to hearing people who know the voice of the Spirit. We live in a culture where we have no examples of those who are truly walking in the Spirit and hearing from heaven. On a daily basis, we hear it when you have your dream or something happens and you see a life-changing event. But so often we, we hear people say, the last time I heard truly from Yahovah was 20 years ago. We need to know what it is to hear the voice. To hear the voice of Yahovah, we need to be able to discern between the voice of our conscience, the voice of the Spirit, and the voice of Hasatan. You must know the difference, and you must understand that when Hasatan is trying to deceive you, he's going to try and replicate the voice of the Spirit. And that's why we have so many problems. Well, this is what I felt the Ruach was saying to me. It was so familiar in how he spoke to me. So you go do it and you fall into trouble and then you don't want to listen to the voice of the Spirit anymore. But the only way we can get to the place of understanding what it means to hear the voice of the Spirit is we have got to always put ourselves in the realm out of our realm and into his realm. So we have to live in the Spirit. So you won't hear the voice of the Spirit if you live in the flesh because you've got no need. And many of our lives don't line up to the walk of the Spirit, so don't even think you'll hear from the Spirit until you step out. And this is the prophetic word. It is time to step out. If you are not hearing the voice, well, maybe you don't need to hear His voice. Because we're, we've made a choice in the flesh that we're not going to live by the Spirit, so He will not speak to you. But as soon as we make the choice, we're going to live by the Spirit. Heaven's going to open up. We're going to hear clearly by the Spirit. And what is He looking for? Where are the people of faith? Where are the people who will just simply believe? Oh, when the Father sees someone who believes. <laughs> it's incredible. He rewards that righteousness as we see in Abram's life, Abraham. We need to believe. I've got so many testimonies of supernatural transformation, so many testimonies and stories that I could share. I could spend 50 or you know, I don't know how many hundreds of hours just talking about what happens when you just hear the voice of the Spirit. You make a turn. You're driving down the road. The Father says, go here. Go there, do this, do that. And you're like, oh, no, no, I don't want to do that. Then you know it's the Spirit and you go and do it and you see the transformation. We need to build our faith. We need to get ourselves in the place where we step out of our comfort zone. That's why we need to do things like mission. You need to uh, interrupt your normal lives. And just some of you, when you interrupt your normal lives, you'll never come back again. Because you will get addicted to what it truly means to walk in the Spirit. The school systems, the college systems, the universities, education is the answer. That's what the government tells you. But the true answer is to know Him and to walk in His ways. Father, what are you doing and how do I become a part of it? That is how we're going to see incredible unity in the body of Messiah. Amen. Amen. It's not about what we always want. You know, some of the greatest miracles I've seen have not been that happy. You ever prayed for someone you don't want to pray for them? Oh, no, I don't want to pray for that person. I don't even like them. There's just no anointing. You know, they're not even listening. They're in rebellion. Well, I'm going to put my hands on that person and ask Yeshua to heal them. He doesn't need to heal them. <laughs> That's what happens in the flesh. But when we listen to the Spirit and we respond in the Spirit, be healed in Yeshua's name and you would no feeling, no anointing, no nothing, no music, no choir. <laughs> no cameras, no action. And they're radically healed. 
When have we been in that place where we see the supernatural? I used to travel up and down from London to Glasgow on buses at night just to minister to people next to me on the buses. It was something like, you know, $25 for a, for a night going up and down from Scotland to London. That was cheaper than a hotel. Or... <laughs> but that's not why I did it. It was a ministry. I would pray in the Spirit and ask the Father, put me next to someone that has needs. I'd be sitting next to people who had bereavements. I'd be sitting next to people with uh, terminal diseases, all these different things, suicidal. It was incredible what the Father did. And there, I've got eight hours with this person all the way to Glasgow. Yeah, sorry, you can't go anywhere. <laughs> you got me. <laughs> Let me tell you about Yeshua. I never did it like a Torah terrorist. I never forced the word. <laughs> I'm serious. You all think I'm joking, don't you? <laughs> I didn't because we want to seek what the Father's saying. Sometimes you just sit there and pray and then you find they turn and ask you a question. So what is it about you? And you're like, excuse me? Well, there's just something about you. It's like you have a peace, and I, I just, I see it all over you. Sometimes I don't even ask the first thing. I don't even, I'm not even praying, what's the opening? How do I communicate to this person? Excuse me, brother, how's your spiritual life? <laughs> how's my spiritual life? My wife doesn't even know how my spiritual life is. Why would I share it with you, some stranger? We need to listen to what he is saying and see transformation. We worked on the streets with the drug addicts in London, with the homeless. We dealt with those with schizophrenia. We dealt with those that were addicted to drugs and alcohol. We dealt with people who were so steeped in the occult, they were manifesting all over the place. And we delivered them, we prayed for them, we got such a reputation at the churches in London when they had someone they couldn't handle and didn't want them coming into their nice pews or their nice new seats then they knew they could call Kenny Russell and his team and send them down there. Our neighbors in our, next to our flat in Fulham in London, they used to hear all sorts of things going on through the night. Cussing, swearing, screaming, yelling. It wasn't us. We're casting devils out of people. I tell you, language gets a little bit uh, into another level when you start kicking the devil out of demon-possessed maniacs, you know? And then they see you standing outside holding your Bible. Morning. Goodness me, standing there holding your Bible after what I heard at 3 o'clock in the morning coming out of your apartment. You people are weird. <laughs> We've got to pay the price. We've got to get to the place where we say, Father, I want to be about your will. Many people think being about their will is giving up jobs and just going on the mission field and maybe go to training for ministry. From 11 years old, I was, uh, uh, had, had uh, companies and I was working from 11 years old. I pretty much left school about then because I thought you went to school to learn to get an education so you could make money, <laughs> you know, and live your life. Well, at the time I was 15, I was a session drummer. I was um, managing bands. I had a horticultural company and I was making tons of money. So what did I have to go to school for? I just went to school to teach the drums. And they thought, well, that's all right, you know, apart from when I was preaching the gospel on the, on the, the steps outside the school. But it was incredible the things that happened in my life as we choose to live by the Spirit. We were missionaries in the south of Spain working with drug rehabilitation. And uh, how I got there, I was working on the streets of London with the drug addicts, and the Father gave me a clear word one day. He said this, he said, get up, go to the south of Spain, go to a place called Mijas. There's a fellowship there that are meeting in a restaurant. When you go to that restaurant, you're going to meet your wife. Oh, that can't be true. <laughs> so many people would just doubt what the Spirit is saying, but I had given to the Father. I said, you choose who you want me to marry. You choose the woman that I'll spend the rest of my life with. I will be about your business. I will serve you, and I'll walk in your ways, and I hand this all over to you. And I got up and I went to the south of Spain, climbed up the hill to Mijas, down near Marbella, and I uh, get up to the mountains, and uh, there's a little sign, exactly what I saw in the spirit on this uh, fellowship hall where they were meeting in a restaurant. Walked in, you know, I'm going to meet my wife. I walk in, and I find the people from the fellowship. They, oh, are you from that fellowship? Yep. Oh, hi. Nice to meet you. I saw your advertisement. <laughs> it was in the Glory magazine. <laughs> <laughs> 
It was on the heavenly Facebook page, you know? <laughs> this was before cell phones, you know? This is before all of that stuff, internet and everything. And I'm sitting there with these people, and there's no one under the age of probably 50 or 60, and I'm thinking either... <laughs> Oh, there was a single woman there, you know, in her 60s and 70s and stuff like that. I'm looking around and I'm thinking, either the Father requires incredible great faith from me or someone's not here that should be here. So I was voting on the second one that someone's going to come, you know. So I'm speaking, but I'm always looking up to see who's going to come in the door to this restaurant. And then in walks this young Jewish lady. And she walks in and the Ruach says, there's your wife. So being a good Scotsman, aye, we know how to get woman. We know how to look after woman. Yeah. So I took my big wife catcher bag out, because you've got wife beater things. We've got wife catcher bags. And I threw it over her, threw it over my shoulder. Woman of mine, come on back to Scotland and see Loch Ness. No, that's not what happened. No. <laughs> that would have been a better, far better story than what happened, you know? And she came over, started talking, and it was just incredible, just all the things that was taking place. And, you know, I married Haley uh, probably 10 months after uh, meeting her there. And it was, it was hard. We went into some serious battles. You know, she was in Carmel. The father gave her a word. When you go back to Spain, you're going to meet uh, your husband in Spain, and he comes from a country beginning with S. I'm like, oh. <laughs> and he said he'll play the drums. He'll play the drums and he'll come from a Scotland beginning with S. And she thought, oh, it's a Spanish guy or something, you know. And then she meets me. She was my interpreter because I didn't speak like this back then. All right, my name's Kenny. I'm from Glasgow. Hi. You want Jesus in your life? <laughs> you know, it was so rough. And I would take the beginning of the word and I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't even bother with the end of the word. I would just use the middle of the word, string it all together, move it 300 miles an hour. Hey! I was in a foreign country anyway, you know, in Spain, so it shouldn't have mattered too much, you know. But she was the only one who could understand me. So she had to interpret for me everywhere we went, you know. So she, was, she became my interpreter back in those days. But there was such opposition against our marriage from our parents. Because here she is, brought up in a Jewish family. No one in their family had ever married what they called a Gentile. Her parents came to Yeshua because of the supernatural transformation within her life. It's one thing to come to Yeshua. It's another thing to allow the will of Yehovah to be worked out in our lives. There was incredible opposition. It was just something else. And I would just pray in the Spirit. And every time the enemy would seek to uh, put a wedge into our relationship, the Father would just do supernatural miracles. I would take flowers for our mother. It's a good thing to do. <laughs> and, uh, you know, that's, that's good for a woman. And a man, he wants food. So I would take sandwiches and stuff like that and different food. And one day, Haley's parents are sitting down and I'm there. And we're all eating. And uh, her dad just bangs the table. And he said, you know what? I have just had it. I'm sick and tired of having you in my house. And I can't stand the very fact that you're eating my food. And then... Uh, Haley's mom said, oh, actually, uh, you're eating his food. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're all eating his food, yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. But here I am, I come long-haired, hippie deal, drummer, evangelist. I want to marry your daughter. I didn't drive up in a Porsche. I didn't, you know, well, how are you going to take care of us? Well, Yehovah knows we're going to walk in his ways. All right. So what's your education in the Spirit and in His Word? Oh, really? And there was such opposition that came against us. And in the end, what I did is I went back to Scotland and I prayed for three months in Scotland. And when I was in Scotland, I said, Father, you know, just move by your Spirit. You do it. And uh, Jonathan Seattle, the singer? Sattel, yeah. Um, someone in South Africa from Johannesburg area sent Haley a uh, cassette of his testimony of how, how he met his wife in hospital. In that testimony, they all sat down and listened to that testimony. It talked about how Jew and Gentile came together as one. And as they heard that testimony, they all, our parents fell on the floor in their lounge and repented and were weeping. 
because they were so convicted of the Spirit and they heard from heaven that this is a union that is called from heaven. So then my wife was in her Spanish lessons the next day and there was some Scottish people there learning Spanish. And their sons were going back to Hart Hill in Scotland and Glasgow. And she said, oh, could I get a lift with them? Can I catch a ride? And she got a lift all the way to Scotland from the south of Spain to meet me and meet my family. And we got engaged there. It was amazing. But it doesn't matter what the father's doing. We've got to have ears to hear. So we hear stories of, of, uh, of uh, when the father gives us words. And we hear great testimonies and go, wow, I wish I had those testimonies. Let me tell you, the Spirit is continually speaking to us. The only difference to all the testimonies I have, I listen and I do what He says. You ever been in a place where the Spirit speaks to you and you don't want to do it? I'm driving down the road in in Wales in the mountains and I've got one of my business partners and I'm teaching him about the importance of hearing the voice of the Spirit. He was always in logic and reason. And he said, I I can honestly say in in 15, 20 years uh, following Yeshua, I've never heard his voice. And he was struggling with this. And and I'm just talking to him. And as I'm talking to him, a pickup truck goes by on the other lane with two motorbikes in the back. And the Ruach says to me, those two motorbikes in the back of that pickup truck are stolen. So I said to, uh, to Nick, I said, oh, those two motorbikes in the back of that pickup truck are stolen. And I just heard the voice of the Spirit. You know, he speaks to us in so many ways. He said, oh, really? So what are you going to do about it? I said, well, I wasn't going to do anything. I was just telling you what the Spirit said. <laughs> he says, well, if they're stolen, shouldn't you call the police? I said, oh, I didn't think of that. Okay, let's call the police. So I dialed 999. I called the police. I said, hi, I'm driving in the mountain roads and in the Wales. And I said, a pickup truck's just gone by. It's got two stolen motorbikes on the back. Can you come and check it out? So they send a unit out to go get it. And we come back around and follow this vehicle from a distance so that we can tell them where it is. And uh, the police car overtakes us. Blue lights, pulls them over. And we keep going around, turn around and go back again. And the next day, the, the police phone me up. And they said, wow, you know, thanks so much. We caught those guys. That was great. We've got those stolen motorbikes. We've got them back to the owners. And I'm just filling out the paperwork. And I want to ask you a question. Where did you see the bikes uh, getting loaded onto the pickup truck? Uh, did you, was it from the person's home or was it another point? Where did, what did you see? And I said, oh, I didn't see anything. I said, I was just driving down the road and the Holy Spirit told me that they're stolen motorbikes, so I called you. All right, a nutter. I'm on the phone to a nutter, some crazy maniac. And I said, listen, I said, can you do me a favor? Can you tell the owners of those motorbikes that God really cares for them? He cares so much for them that he will return their motorbikes to them. And I said, please promise me you'll tell those people that. And he agreed to do it. We need to know what it is to hear the voice of the Spirit. We need the divine appointments, the holy assignments. We need to get to the place where we're seeking first His kingdom in the morning so that we see what is to come. And we press in and we catch hold of what the Father is saying. He is really real. We need to know His reality. Do you know Him? There's two things we must never have a problem with, and that is the will of Yahweh for your life and the voice of the Spirit. So how do we hear? It's really quite simple. Step out of your realm and into his realm. That's it. It's easy. Step out of your realm into his realm. Get in the place of prayer and say, Father, what are you doing? How do I become a part of it? That's how I get into so much trouble. (laughs) Lots of trouble. I didn't know what my calling was, but as I started to look back over the years, the Father started to reveal to me what my calling was. I'm called to the lying prophet and deceptive leaders. Oh, well, thanks for that. (laughs) Yeah, that's not the one I wanted. You know, I wanted to drive a red Ferrari or something. No. That wasn't the calling I was looking for. I've sat in the boardrooms of major ministries in the nations, and I've prophesied over them, and I've heard the very things that the Father has to say to them. And it's not how beautiful are your feet. I've had some of them with their bigger possible rings wanting to smash me in the face because of the things that have come out of my mouth. Oh, I didn't want to say the things that came out of my mouth either. It's like vomit. 
I don't want to hear those things. And I asked them, is this the word of Yehovah? If this is not his word, then I'm a lying prophet, and you have every right to be angry. But if this is the word of Yehovah, you need to repent. And I'm asking you, is it the word of Yehovah? And every time they would say yes. I've had some ministries trying to rip my suit as they haul me into their face. How do you know this when I expose their sexual sins? I don't want that calling. So if you wake up in the middle of the night and the father says, Kenny Russell's got a word for you, it's probably not a good thing. I hate it when those calls come in. When ministries say we want to fly you out because we believe you have a word for us. I'm like, oh, no, not again. And this is my deal with the Spirit. I say, I don't want to know about it now. Let's enjoy the journey. I want to praise when I'm gone. Just tell me when I get there. So I come in, sit down, and say, is the father giving you a word? I said, not yet. Let's have a cup of coffee. <laughs> and then we'll just wait before him. And then we hear what the father is doing. How do we hear his voice? We step out of our realm. We live by faith. I learned an entire trade by the voice of the spirit at 17 years old. I was a dairy plant process operator in the largest independent dairy in Britain. I wasn't clever. They gave me all these manuals I had to lead, read. It was all toggle switches, not proper computer systems. I couldn't read them, so I put my head in a 3,500 gallon tank that was empty. Probably would have been better if it was full. But put my head in, I said, Father, you either get me out of here. And then something else came out of my mouth that wasn't part of the plan. I was just saying, Father, can you get me out of here? Or teach me! Where did that come from? <laughs> I didn't know that we have multiple choice here. Will you get me out of here or teach me? And I heard the voice of the Spirit. I'm going to teach you. And for a year, I made loads of mistakes, thousands of mistakes. I ran and ran and ran to correct all the mistakes that the Ruach told me I made. And the people at the work thought it was perfect in all the things I was doing. They thought they couldn't believe it. How can this guy get all this stuff so in track online? And I made loads of mistakes and had to run like crazy. He taught me a voice. He taught me, he taught me by his voice a trade. And I, I was in that dairy and I wanted to minister to everyone. There was over a thousand people worked in that dairy or maybe more. And in the canteen, it was about four times or maybe six times the size of this room packed with tables and people eating. And one day, I'd always take my Bible and I'd always share my faith in the canteen with someone that was next to me or near me. And one day, this rough guy did street fighting and illegal dog fighting and underground stuff like that and crime. He stood up one day in the canteen and he looked over at me. He said, Kenny Russell, why don't you just shut up about your Jesus? And the whole place, quiet. The entire kitchen at the back stops. Everyone, no pans are clanging, nothing. The whole place comes to an attention. Man, I've got a congregation of about seven or eight hundred. I'm like, wow. I'm not even a pastor. Look at that. Wow. Seven, eight hundred people all came to hear me today. As I'm just trying to have some lunch, I stood on my chair and I looked at him. I said, why don't I, stop? Why don't I shut up about my Jesus, let me tell you. And I preached the gospel in four minutes and shared the love of Yehovah. The power of the Spirit hit the place. He didn't respond back because his glory manifested. People were weeping. There was tears coming down their face. And when I went back to the ultra heat treatment department, people would be trying to get uh, a reason to come to that department to make a delivery or do something so they could just ask me privately, will you pray for me? I prayed for so many people. I ministered to so many people. And then I said, Father, you know, it's great being in this dairy. It's great doing all this stuff. It's great learning a trade by your voice. But you didn't call me to be a plant operator. You called me to minister your word. I said, what's next? He said, give up your job. Okay, what do you want me to do? I'll tell you after. Let me just go get some pastoral counseling. Uh, I got this word, give up your job. Yeah, it was God speaking to me, um, but I don't know what I'm going to do. What do you think? Is that a good thing to do, pastor? Well, brother, maybe we should just wait a little, wait, you know, put a fleece down, try and get some confirmation, you know. 
We're not called when we walk in the Spirit to lay fleeces. We're not called to pray just whatever door opens, that's the door we're going to walk through. That will get you into a place of deception because that is how the blind operate. Well, if the door opens, I'll go through it. Oh, no, that one's not opening. That's not opening. Oh, this one's opening. Okay, I'll go through that. That is not how we're led by the Spirit. So how are we led by the Spirit? By His voice. He speaks to you. When they took lots to get the the disciple to replace Judas, it was of the flesh. It was nothing to do with the Spirit. They had all the Scriptures lining up. They thought this is what needs to happen. And yes, a replacement has to come. But the way they chose that uh, new apostle was not in accordance with the will of Yehovah. Because it was Paul. He was the one that was chosen by Yeshua. We never heard of that disciple again. Well, if he'd had a name like Hamish McTavish the Haggis Basher, we might have remembered him a little bit better. <laughs> yeah, that would have helped me out a lot anyway. I don't know about you people. In Jeremiah 31, verse 21, it says, Set up road signs, put up guideposts, take note of the highway, the road that you take. Return, virgin Israel, return to your towns. How long will you wander, unfaithful daughter Israel? Yehovah will create a new thing on earth. The woman will return to the man. This is what Yehovah Almighty, the God of Israel, says. When I bring them back from captivity, the people in the land of Judah and in its towns will once again use these words. Yehovah bless you, uh, you prosperous city, you sacred mountain. People will live together in Judah and all its towns, farm Farmers and those who move about with their flocks. I will refresh the weary and satisfy the faint. Verse 26. At this I woke and looked around. My sheep, um, my sheep had been pleasant to me. The days are coming, declares Yehovah, when I will plant the kingdom of Israel and Judah with the offspring of the people and of animals, just as I watched over them to uproot and tear down and to overthrow and destroy and bring disaster, so I will watch over them to build and to plant, declares Yehovah. In those days, people will no longer say, the parents have eaten sour grapes and the children's teeth are set on edge. Instead, everyone will die for their own sin. Whoever eats sour grapes, their own teeth will be set on edge. Many have fallen into the traps of Hasatan that he has set up. We need to get to the place where we see the bigger picture. So what is it about knowing the voice of the Spirit? It's about getting everything lined up for what the Father is doing, knowing his will, knowing his purpose. He is going to bring Judah and Israel back to the land. It's an abomination what's happening in the land today. The control systems of bringing people back to the land. It says in Deuteronomy chapter 30, they will come back to Torah and be brought back to the land. So when we're seeking first his kingdom to know his voice and to walk in his ways, we've got to get to the place where we are on fire by the Spirit and we recognize that his will and purpose will take us back to the land. Because that's what he's doing. He's preparing his people to return, return, come back to the Torah, come back, teshuvah, repent, come back. So that means our lives are going to turn around. We've got groups right now trying to make declarations, just as the Jews made declaration when they came into the land. And how did it work for the Jews? It didn't work too well because we have democracy and we're controlled by the UN and we have a state. We don't even have control over our own nation and our own decisions. We're subject to the decisions of other nations. Oh, we have American fighter jets, but we have to buy our missiles from America. So if they don't like what we're doing, they delay the delivery of the missiles. It's no different with Britain and other nations that supply different types of technology for war. If they don't like what we're doing, they just stop supplying us. The Iron Dome, which is such a blessing to intercept those missiles... We have to get those missiles from America. So if they don't like what we're doing, they can delay those missiles being sent to us. Controlled. 
But there's a day coming. There's a time of change coming. I believe there's going to be a supernatural revival in the land of Israel. I love the scripture that was read this morning from Isaiah chapter 62 about Jerusalem, that we need watchmen on your walls. We need to get in the place where we will intercede and say, Father, we are not going to give you rest or take rest ourselves till you establish the city and the land. So you're back to Torah, your identity is Israel, but where's your connection with the land? It's very important that we're connected to the land. What breaks my heart as I travel in the land of Israel, there's very few people that are Hebraic mindset in the land of Israel. We have Mercianics that just follow Christianity. I've heard them when they witness, when they witness to a Jew, come to Yeshua, you don't have to follow Torah anymore. And over here, we don't know this type of thing is going on. Probably less than 10% of the Mercianics in the land actually are following Torah. The Mercianic believers. The rest are under the grace perversion. And it's got to change. But no matter where we're at, when we need direction in our life, let's not take the advice of what man says. The greatest word you will ever hear is a word that comes from heaven. And my desire is that people are alert that they hear from heaven, that they capture by the Spirit. You know, I was in Florida last year. I was driving up to go to Alabama, somewhere over there. Yeah, Alabama! Woo! And I'm driving up the 70 or the 75, is it? One of the two. I'm driving up there. I'm going past all these fifth wheelers, about a million of them, driving up the road and... uh, Anyway, I'm just driving along and I'm listening to music, I'm worshiping, probably listening to you, Andrew, and just uh, praising. And then I hear this word very clear. The the Ruach says, oh, you just passed your friends, Brian and Lisa. And I'm like, you know, they're doing 50, I'm doing 75 on the 75, because that's what you do on the 75. Oh, I tell you, I love it when I get on the 485. Oh, boy. (laughs) Man, that's a good road. (coughs) Yeah. So I'm doing 75 on the 75, and the Ruach says, you just passed Brian and Elisa, and they just bought a new uh, fifth-wheeler, and they just bought a new truck. I have no point of reference. And I'm like, oh, yeah, no, that's not true. That's not the voice of the Spirit. And then I realized, wait a second, I've just dismissed that because it's totally, <laughs> there's no reference. So I just dismissed it, and I heard the Spirit, don't you know my voice? Yes. So I call Brian on the cell phone. I call him up. I'm like, hey, Brian, where are you? Are you on the 75? He said, yeah. I said, oh. I said, hold on a minute. I take a picture from my mirror of this truck, you know, from the mirror. I send him a text message. I said, is that you? He's like, yeah. Where are you? I put my hazard lights on. I'm on the black truck in the front about, you know, the length of this building away. So we stop and have a coffee and just have a time of fellowship. What's the odds of us having those divine appointments and connection? This is a trillion to one or impossible. (coughs) We need to involve the voice of the Spirit in every aspect of our life. Not just when we're ministering. Every aspect of our life we need to hear. Do we always get it right? No. It's not about perfection. But it's about yielding to him. It's about being spiritually alert. I want to encourage you today. Don't be afraid to follow the voice of the Spirit. Some of you are disheartened because all you want is to know his voice. And it's almost like you're you're like, you know, if I just groan for an hour, maybe I'll hear his voice. There's nothing you can do in the flesh. You just have to yield. I believe there's people here today and you're saying, Father, I need direction. I need to know your voice. I need to know what you're saying. You're in critical places right now. You need a word. You're at a crossroads. You're in a place, if you don't hear from heaven, bad things are going to happen. You even are in a place of danger. You need to hear the voice. And you're looking around For the opinions of man, you're looking around because you're not hearing from heaven. I just want to tell you, you're going to hear from heaven today. I would like everyone to stand up right now.
It's time for us to hear. You know, there were so many people that were filled with the Spirit last night and got to speak in tongues for the first time. Hallelujah. And that's a blessing. Why? Because when we start speaking in the Spirit, it brings transformation to our lives. It says in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, When I came to you, brothers, I didn't come with eloquence or superior wisdom as I proclaimed to you the testimony about Elohim. For I resolved to know nothing while I was with you except Yeshua the Messiah and Him crucified. I came to you in weakness and fear and with much trembling. My message and my preaching were not with wise and persuasive words, but with a demonstration of the Spirit's power, so that your faith might not rest on man's wisdom, but on Elohim's power. I want us to meditate on that word right now so we understand, so that your faith might not rest on man's wisdom. We need to repent for all of the times we ran to man and the teachings of man to try and get our answers. We have to love each other, and we need teachers. And I'm not saying dismiss teaching, but when you're in a place where you need an answer, you need to hear from him. Your faith might not rest on man's wisdom, but on Elohim's power. We do, however, speak a message of wisdom among the mature, but not the wisdom of this age or the rulers of this age who are coming to nothing. No, we speak of Elohim's secret wisdom, a wisdom that has been hidden that Elohim uh, destined for our glory before time began. None of the rulers of this age understood it, for if they had, they would not have crucified uh, the Savior. However, as it is written, here we go, Ron Canoli, bring it out, get your guitar ready. No eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has conceived what God has prepared for those who love him. Da -da -ba. Oh. I thought I was Ron Canole. Sorry, I thought he was coming out. Did he not come out? <laughs> I was just singing along with him. I saw him. <laughs> anyway, people stop right there. No eye is seen. No ear is heard. No mind is conceived what God has prepared for those who love him. Okay, close your Bibles. Oh. But is the very next verse. But God has revealed it to us by His Spirit. The Spirit searches all things, even the deep things of Elohim. For who among men knows the thoughts of a man except the man's spirit within him? In the same way, no one knows the thoughts of Elohim except the spirit of Elohim. We have not received the spirit of this world, but the spirit who is from Elohim, that we may understand what Elohim has freely given us. This is what we speak, not the words taught by human wisdom, but the words taught by the Spirit, expressing spiritual truths in spiritual words. The man without the Spirit does not accept the things that come from the Spirit of Elohim, for they are foolishness to him. And he cannot understand them because they are spiritually discerned. The spiritual man makes judgment about all things, but he himself is not subject to man's judgment. For who has known the mind of Yahovah that he may instruct him? All right, should we close our Bible there or should we leave the last bit? But, another but. But we have the mind of the Mashiach. We have the mind of Christ. Hallelujah. You have the mind of Christ. You have his mind. You don't have to fall onto human wisdom. You can just come into a place of the Spirit and receive his transformation. We don't need the eloquence of speech. I can hardly read because of my education and I have a doctorate of theology. How did that happen? Because I've spent the last 25 or 30 years of my life ministering the nations of the world and seen so many people supernaturally transformed. When I speak in colleges and university, they say, where does the wisdom come from that comes out of your mouth? I have no education. I don't have an honorary doctorate. I have a full doctorate based on 10 years of ministry. And they, t they took uh, all of my CDs from one series that I did, and they transcribed it, and they made it into the final papers that went before the board of the university or the college. And they said I was more than qualified for a doctorate of theology. And I'm like, what do you want, a title or a testimony? <laughs> That's what I was brought up listening to. And the father said, you need to have this doctorate of theology. I'm like, I don't want it. 
He said, you're going to have it. And it was that very thing that gave me the visas to come into the land of, of America when I stayed here. Without that, I couldn't have come here. But we have the mind of the Messiah. I believe right now we are in a place of an open heaven. Like I said, the Father can do more in a few minutes than you can do in your entire lifetime. And we are moving into a spiritual zone right now. We're moving into a place where we don't have to labor for the next five hours. You don't have to squeeze grapes out of that tree. You can just come to the place, lift your hands before him, and say, Father, I need to know your voice. I need you to speak to me. I'm in a place of crisis. I'm in a place of difficulty where I'm confused because of the wisdom of man. I don't need the wisdom of this world. I need to hear from heaven. Father, will you speak to your people right now? Will you open up our eyes, open up our ears, so that we can see and we can hear from you right now? I break every assignment the enemy has against you, everything that's trying to block you from knowing and hearing his voice. Be broken now in Yeshua's name. I speak the supernatural wisdom of the Spirit over you right now. Just pray. Father, just move right now in this place. Give us visions, give us understanding, minister to us. Answers, Father, we call out for the answer of the Spirit, that people will be able to understand that we can have your wisdom revealed to us by the Spirit, that you search all things, the deep things of Elohim. And Father, we need you. We need your voice. We need to know what to do in our marriages. We need to know what to do with our children. We need to know what to do in our businesses and our ministries. We need to know what steps we're going to take. Are we in the right place? Ask him questions. Ask the Father questions. If he's revealing things to you that are out of place, repent right now. And say, Father, I give you my life. I, I don't know what to do. I don't understand all these things. It's in our weakness that he is strong. It's not in us trying to just be strong in the flesh to accomplish things. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Wow. You know, many people just received an impartation of the Spirit. You'll never be the same. Never rely on what man has to say to you over the Spirit. If there's one word I want you to remember, the greatest word you will ever receive will never come from man. It will come from him. And I want you to hold on to that this weekend, that you will take a hold of that this Shabbat, that it will bring transformation to your life. The greatest word you will ever receive comes from him. Are you willing to pay the price in his presence? Then let's do it together. Father, we thank you for this time together. We thank you, Father, that it's not an eloquent speech. It's not in all those things. It's just simply, we just simply come. And we say, take our lives, use us. Here we are, Father, send us, use us for the purpose of your kingdom. If you're sick in your body, I just want to ask you to place your hands on the part of your body where you're sick. I just declare right now supernatural healing supernatural healing. Be healed now in Yeshua's name. We come against all forms of sickness and disease right now. Be healed right now in Yeshua's name. Thank you, Father. And Father, break our hearts with the things that break yours. Help us to align our agenda so that we are people that are seeking after you. And we ask all this in your wonderful name. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah.